Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today we gotta talk about a cash heist. The largest cash heist just happened, literally Easter Sunday. Now you might have been hearing about this, and to start off with, I just want to preface this by saying I do not endorse any criminal heist whatsoever. It is wrong, it is haram, the FBI will hunt you down to the ends of the earth, and the reality of it is, is stealing nobody is the winner okay always play by the rules and be a stand-up howdy-do guy now that i've said that let's get into the wild shenanigans of this weekend so ladies and gentlemen you might have heard of the largest money heist in la history how did the thieves go undetected so ladies and gentlemen there is a company known as garda world okay now, Garda World, if you actually look into what they do, is they are a big security contractor in North America. They operate pretty much internationally and, in some cases, for the United States government itself. Now, that also said, they are the world's largest privately owned integrated security and risk company. Over 132,000 dedicated and highly trained professionals. And, of course, they work for companies, governments, humanitarian organizations, and big multinationals. These guys are pretty massive, okay? And of course, one of their big services is the Cash Vault service. Count on our advanced solutions for handling cash, precious metals, and foreign exchange needs. Now, if you're like, whoa, I see where this one's going. Yeah, they got themselves broken into, boys. This wasn't any regular heist. This was a heist on a money counting facility <laughs> owned by a security contractor, dude. Now, where did this actually happen? Well, this happened in Silmar, okay? Now, if you don't know what Silmar is, it's a bit north of Los Angeles City in the San Fernando Valley. And of course, you can look over here. It's a beautiful location. Uh, but of course, it's a location with a lot of history attached to it. For instance, do you know that Silmar is still the home of the largest U.S. drug seizure in history? Yeah, a record 20 tons of the old Colombian were seized, where a tip actually led to $6 billion, back in 1989, by the way, adjusting for inflation, $15 billion worth of drugs absolutely taken off the market by the DEA. So, of course, Silmar is a place where a lot of money is apparently moved around, and in some cases, that money might not be operating in totally legitimate markets. But in this case, the $30 million we're talking about was actually in a money-counting facility. So let's actually dive a little bit into what happened over there. All right, so now that you know a rough idea of what's going on, around this area, all right, by uh, Roxford Street and San Fernando Road, exists the Garda World money counting facility where this actual break-in had seemed to happen. So you were looking in the parking lot right now, and of course, you can see that they've got a bit of a gated fence over here, you know, a little bit of a closed entry and exit point. Uh, you've got a few Garda World trucks over here. These are actual, like, you know, security trucks. You probably see them drive around all the time. I know that there's a bank near me and I believe Garda actually contracts with them. So usually late at night when you're driving outside, you'll probably see like one of these trucks alongside two or three security guards that are actually moving money in and out of banks. See, again, here's the thing. For banks moving large amounts of actual physical cash, they don't they don't do it themselves. They actually hire a security company that actually moves the money for them because it's just safer that way, okay? These people know their security well enough to transport large chunks of cash in and out. And sometimes what'll happen and why you hire guys like this is you'll often have situations, not that often, but sometimes actual criminals will try to attack these people on the roads. So obviously a bank is probably never going to be able to fight an actual criminal on the road, but these guys hire serious security professionals, people that are willing to grab an assault rifle or any weapon and be able to go toe to toe with anybody trying to attack them. There's footage online, some very famous footage you can see of this stuff happening around the world. So this is obviously why you hire guys like this. Now, anyways, their facility over here, and this is from August 2022, what had happened was a bunch of criminals got onto the rooftop of this building, drilled their way through the roof into a vault below, and then actually had opened a hole on the side of the building, all right, broken it, and then escaped that way. Truly some real Grand Theft Auto shit right here. Payday 2 level of heists, okay? This is a full stealth job. Death wish difficulty, death sentence difficulty, one down. So if you look carefully around over here, obviously they have to have a security camera perimeter. Clearly no security cameras to watch the top of the building, apparently. 
And of course, if you look around over here, obviously inside this building, you can see that right here. This is obviously where they move cash into via trucks. And of course, inside this facility, they count the money. Now, it's from my understanding that in a money counting facility, usually it's done underground, all right? Like cameras are everywhere. There's a lot of surveillance going on. So there's been a few people, obviously a lot of people questioning the legitimacy of this heist, all right? Whether it was actual criminals who did it or it was criminals that had potentially an inside job. So apparently, according to the officials in this situation, these guys got through the roof into the vault below where apparently the money is kept. And then apparently there was like a hole on the side of the building. This is from like ABC News where like they flew above and they saw this boarded up little hole with debris on the ground. And again, it's unconfirmed if that damage is related to the burglary, but it's like, it's straight out of GTA. It's like what, they got in, got to the vault, what, set up C4 or something, blew up a hole on the side or drilled it out and then escaped that way? The world is currently unknown, all right? The world doesn't know. The FBI is involved, the law enforcement agencies are involved. There's currently a manhunt to find these people for this apparent actual heist. So again, <clears throat> One of the things people have kind of asked is how much of an inside job is this really? Now, rooftops, based on, again, what Fox had actually interviewed, a Stacey Porter, a retired Homeland Security agent, said that businesses often neglect the vulnerability of the roof. But even if people manage to make their way into the building, there should be plenty of security, and should be is absolutely true. So the reason why there's been a lot of speculation this is an inside job is that this wasn't, again, a regular building. It was a money counting facility run by a big security contractor. So obviously you have to have a decent layer of security inside you. There's gotta be a, a, a shit ton of cameras. Even speaking of the vault, for instance, right? When people talk about drilling into a vault, you can't really just drill into a vault, for instance. To, to be honest, this is just one uh, like countermeasure that I'm showing you. This is a seismic vibration center, again, for safes and vault from Honeywell. And the idea here is these are seismic vibration sensors designed to protect high value and high risk financial, retail, and other applications and assets. So what happens is that they are installed in newer existing security systems and they basically are designed for shock sensing. So it detects attacks on bank vault doors, ATMs, deposit safes, strong room vaults, modular vaults, vending machines, even freestanding safes, hatches, gates, chests, so on and so forth. And it detects attacks from heavy strokes of a sledgehammer or even explosives, repeated knocks from hammers and chisels, or drilling, mechanical cutting, acetylene torches, thermal cutting, water cool diamond drills, so on and so forth. Okay, this is not like Grand Theft Auto or Payday where you can just set up a little drill and go through it. Sensors like this will trip an alarm off long before a person even gets, you know, maybe like a, an eighth of an inch into a vault. So for, a fa for the fact that the vault exists, you have to imagine <laughs> that Garda probably actually has all of these security systems in place. So a more, you know, likely answer is seemingly it, it, it appears that it could be somebody inside gave them like code access. And that's how these people got through the roof and grabbed $30 million worth of cash, which by the way, isn't a small chunk of change, all right? It's not something that you can just stuff into duffel bags and run away. $30 million in cash is a pretty heavy amount to be taking out with you in a way, in a heist that went completely unnoticed under the cover of darkness. Insane shit. And again, even a retired LAPD detective said, a place like this has systems that are very sophisticated to protect the facilities. There's cameras galore, very sensitive alarms that pick up movement, sensors that pick up movement. And to finally get access to the safe, you need an access code, a passcode to get in there. And who's going to know that? So obviously a manhunt has been issued for the people A, that broke into the facility and stole the money, but I'm not doubting that there's obviously the people that are working at this facility who are also completely being monitored right now and are slowly being put into a game of corporate among us to figure out who the fuck got 30 million gone. Now, obviously, do I think that this money is truly going to be gone for Garda? I don't imagine just because obviously companies like this, they have insurance. So it's not like totally out of the world that they don't have access to like, you know, this money or they won't have access to any of this. Obviously, I I'm sure that there's going to be some reparations, uh, at least when it comes to this money. Now, this threw me down a little bit of a micro hole, all right? Obviously, a bit of the actual assessments from people initially when it came out that maybe instead of like a money facility, this could have been like a weed business because apparently they have like cannabis banking in California, but because weed is not federally legal, 
the operation of them using money around the state could be a bit of an issue, but obviously that speculation got dropped because it ended up actually being the Garda facility. So again, and again, banks will work with a lot of these organizations. Cash just, you know, gets put into these buildings to be moved around. And sometimes it's for completely legitimate businesses. And sometimes it could be for these, you know, weirdly legitimate businesses where they're illegal in one state, but obviously not recognized in another. And there are banks in California that exist for things like, you know, cannabis banking, right? Where these guys literally exist to allow people in the state to operate financial services, but obviously they say major financial institutions refuse to serve cannabis businesses because of that federal prohibition. So again, it's a pretty big issue over there, but this wasn't anywhere related to it. The other thing that I saw shared around on Reddit was the fact that one person showed this flight map, it seemed, of a plane that was just basically flying around this general location. And of course the plane was so close it had no call sign but because the actual facility was right around here where I'm pointing my mouse, somebody was speculating that the actual criminals jumped from this and parachuted all the way here. Now, obviously this was debunked pretty quickly by a Redditor because obviously they had said that if you look into this situation, the plane was uh, doing circles near the port of Los Angeles before heading up to the valley and flying what appears to be a pretty normal approach into WHP. In fact, if you go back even further, you can track what is most likely doing same target circles over South Gate and flying near downtown Los Angeles. The target is a TISB target, so it's not going to keep the same hex and will drop from time to time and then reappear. And hence why you won't get a continuous single flight track. With that said, it's most likely a law enforcement helicopter. So again, uh, you know, people were speculating and I kind of wanted to cover some of the most interesting conspiracy theories in this situation. Now this threw me down a bit of a loop when it came to the state of California. Apparently this state is filled with some of the most insane heisters you could imagine, okay? People that apparently get away with crimes and crimes that are pretty, I guess you could say, jaw-droppingly wild to witness. Two years ago, there was a hundred million dollar jewelry heist on a Brinks truck that actually ended up happening in less than 30 minutes. If it sounds like it's out of a movie, it probably should be. Of course, the idea over here is uh, last year in a Brinks tractor trailer that was headed from the Bay Area to Pasadena with about a hundred million dollars worth of actual merchandise on board, Thieves had broken in and stolen all the jewels out there. In fact, there's actually body cam footage you can watch of this as well. And again, this is insane because the people that were behind this heist are also not captured. They're still very much at large. So obviously you got the feds involved, you got the LA County cops involved. It's a wild scenario. And even the figure is a bit questionable as well. Like some people actually lowball it to as low as $10 million and some go up to like a hundred million. I'm not entirely sure how these ranges, how, how, why this range is so in big, but regardless, it's a lot of money that ended up being taken from an actual security truck as well. So again, the people haven't been caught, but it's one of those wild situations, right? And of course, if you're reading into like, again, just the journalists here, Rob Report said the vehicle contained pieces from several different jewelers. Brinks has said that the late night theft took place while one driver was asleep in the vehicle's sleeping berth and while the other was inside a Lebec, California. Truck stop getting food. It all took place within a 27 minute window of time. And again, people will obviously sit down and immediately wonder if there may not have been an inside job component to it as well. Again, that's for cops to truly decide. Now, I feel like if you're an armored truck driver in the state of California, ooh boy, you're gonna at least witness one robbery in your life. California, again, just attracts some of the wildest heist stories you could imagine, okay? Again, it, this is one called the Dunbar Armored Robbery back in 1997, okay, September 12th of that year. Uh, in downtown LA, $18.9 million, so around 35 million today, was actually robbed. And this was orchestrated by a few individuals who apparently had almost left no evidence. And of course, were only implicated two years after the robbery when they accidentally gave a real estate broker a stack of banknotes that were still secured in their originally original currency straps. And that broker obviously contacted the police and notified him of it, right? And in this case, the actual robbery was an inside job because the police realized when they actually looked into the robber here, okay, who was uh, Alan Pace III, they had actually ended up being fired. They couldn't find anything, but basically what they actually looked into and when they looked into the money that they had recently acquired, obviously then they started piecing together the situation and they found out, oh shit, they were able to buy some crazy stuff because they ended up stealing like what? 
$18.9 million from like a robbery two years ago. Wild stuff, man. But yeah, there's been a robbery, a cash heist that happened in the state of California. And it might be the state's largest cash heist in U.S. history. So, ladies and gentlemen, wild stuff, man. Honestly, would never even expect to see it. But yes, there are still heists happening in the year 2024. Now, is the state of California or the U.S. government, the FBI, going to find these people? That is yet to be determined. But ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and I wanted to share something I found pretty goddamn interesting with you. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.